Hi friendly friends, it's Amy from Saber Salvage Scent and I hope this finds you in a great space. Um, for those of you who have never been to the channel before, thanks for stopping by. This mostly focuses on all things fragrance, occasionally a little other DIY project. Um, for those of you who are returning, thank you so much. Um, I hope that we can continue the conversation. All feel free to leave comments, ideas, questions, and for those of you who haven't subscribed, I hope you'll hit the red subscribe button so that we can stay in touch. So today I thought I would just do a um, little review of a little collection of mine, but one that holds a lot of meaning for me. I'm going to talk about uh, the original classic Halston perfume and three of its flankers. This is in memory of my mom who passed away about a year ago today. And um, so I'm just going to tell you a little bit about her to give you an idea of why I think she wore Halston. And then I'm going to talk to you about what I think is this incredible uh, classic that can still be found today and for pennies and a few of its flankers and what I think about them. One I absolutely adore. Love the original and adore one of the flankers and the other two I think are worth check checking out too, but I'll tell you more about them. So, whew, my mom, um, Margaret, Marge, but most sometimes went by Margie, um, was born in 1930. She had a, I would say, very, very, very tough growing up. Um, had 10 brothers and sisters. Grew up in the mountains of Pennsylvania. Um, and grew up in abject poverty. Uh, I don't think it exactly started that way. I mean, they weren't rolling in it. But um, her father passed away uh, when she was very little. And... Um, yeah, with that many kids, her her mom remarried a not so great guy, and they lived in poverty and abuse, frankly. So um, then my mom's life changed a lot. She had big dreams, but she met my dad, who grew up in the same town, and was just a stand-up dude. So they got married, and. Um, I would say because she came from challenges and not having a lot, she made the most of everything and appreciated every little thing. She could be a little tough sometimes, as you can imagine, coming from that that beginning. Um, but she also just had a lot of style, and though she could be a little tough as a mom, sometimes she had a lot of love in her heart, a lot of joy, a very open mind, and she was one of the best traveling partners you'd ever have just enjoyed every little thing um let's see uh and just to give you an idea of her style uh obviously in 89 years it evolved and changed a lot um but i would say what i remember a lot and that kind of was a through line to me was kind of that 70s look um and you know it's interesting because halston came out in 1975 and the fashion of course it was influential. Um, so my mom's, the way I see my mom's fashion in my mind is, um, if you can remember Mary Tyler Moore and then there's Maude in those shows and kind of the way they dressed, which I would call like a mid-century to almost Maude look. So my mom wore a lot of um, good looking slacks and cool long kind of sweater coats and um, she even had like a hip at one point kind of like a almost narrow looking um, long cool dress she was really into uh, she mostly wore slacks and sweaters or tops um, but occasionally a dress but she wore a lot of uh, winter whites Kelly greens uh, autumn colors and she was like a strawberry blonde young in her life but then when from when my memory on because she had me late in life she had me in her late 40s she had beautiful white hair um, and uh, yeah she um, she just loved uh, 
life and she loved um, just to give you an idea of her of more of her style she loved jazz crooners um, she also was the biggest Credence Clearwater Revival fan loved CCR and some rock music um, often listened to that traveling with her and um, she just loved Halston perfume so she was a signature scent person. I think she tried a few other scents. Like I remember her bringing home a couple samples. She she worked in retail and um, was a homemaker most of the her life as a job. But then also when I came around late in her life, child five, she worked in retail. And um, so she did occasionally bring home other samples and things, but she wore Houston as for my whole life that I can remember um, and she wore the perfume and the powder those were often uh, Christmas or holiday gifts to her and just loved it so I'm going to talk about the original Houston a little today and um, you know maybe giving you a sense just now with my mom's style I think you'll get why she wore it it really fits her um, and then I'm going to talk about three flankers so um, the original Houston looks like this. People love or hate this bottle. As a lady who loves modern air, and I gotta tell you, I love this bottle. I think it's super cool. Top's kind of like loose sight. But when this first came out, this was like revolutionary. People were like, what the what? Over this bottle. I think it's really cool. And you can tell, um, a way to tell an older bottle sometimes is that it'll actually say Halston, which I don't think the new ones do. This is my mom's last bottle. So um, I'm going to tell you about this first one, and then we're going to talk about three more quickly. So the original Houston came out in 1975. Um, it is considered a Shepra floral. For those of you who aren't aware, Shepra tends to be a triad of things, which is citrus, resin, and some kind of moss, in this case, oak moss. Um, this was uh, marketed to women, but I will just say right off the bat of these four flankers. There are two that I think are very unisex, and this is one of them. Um, even though it was marketed to women originally, and I think that's because it has an oak mossy thing going on. Uh, it came out, if I didn't say 1975, you can still find it very affordably. Like, depending on the size of the bottle, you can find this from 10 to 15 bucks. You can even find the vintage ones pretty affordably, which I uh, suggest if you can. Um, the uh, nose was Bernard Chart, uh, Chant, and um, he is known for many great scents from that time and some of my absolute favorites. So some of the Aramis scents, um, Aromatics Elixir by Clinique, and this has some similarities to that, I would say. Um, many Lauder scents, such as Cinnabar, has a few similarities with Cinnabar too, though it's not quite as spicy. Um, he also designed uh, uh, Cabochard by Grey, another favorite perfume that's much more, I would say, oak mossy leathery. Um, and the red bottled square Ralph Lauren for women. So these are like, to me, killer gems, powerhouses. So um, the top notes are green leaves, mint, melon, bergamot, peach, the mid notes are marigold, carnation, cedar, orris root, rose, ylang ylang, and jasmine. And the base notes are oak moss, vetiver, amber, incense, patchouli, sandalwood, and musk. Um, I sprayed this earlier today. And I'll tell you of all these things, in a typical kind of 70s way, this is a major composition. Not all of those things can kind of be pulled out. Um, my personal opinion is some of the scents from the 70s and definitely like Houston, um, I would say the Cinnabar, Grey, uh, Cabochard, um, things from that time, I find them to be way less sweet than the things that are popular today. And because of that, the way I've been programmed, I think they're a little gutsier and I think, I mean, I love sweet things. Do not get me wrong. I love them, live for them. But these to me are a little gutsier, edgier. And that's to me perhaps why I think gender doesn't know what they could be. I think they could be worn by either gender easily. Um, 
So just my opinion. The things that come out the most though in the composition for me are um, marigold, orris root, a little bit of powder, powderiness, um, oak moss, amber, and incense. And where some oak moss heavy perfumes are just a blast of oak moss, and I'm, I'm there for that too, this to me is nicely balanced with these other things I've mentioned. So it's not just like only oak moss, you equally to me get the marigold, orris root, oak moss, amber incense. So to me, this is just so cool. Part of the reason I love it, I'm sure is somewhat based on my scent memory because it's my mom walking around. Um, but I think this is just a tremendous, often overlooked fragrance. So check it out. So the classic Halston, uh, worn by Margie. Um, so second is one that came along a little later, Halston Sheer. And the way you know that it's Halston Sheer is it's got that little bit of frostiness on the bottle. Otherwise it looks very similar. I'm gonna be honest, this is my least favorite of the four I own. But it's because I got a lane, and it, it leaves my lane, and I'll tell you what I mean. Halston Share was released in 1998. It's considered a floral fruity fragrance. Um, there's no nose listed. Can't find anything about the nose. Um, interesting to know, this little baby has been discontinued. I bought this bottle, I think, in 2018, probably about three years ago. It's since been discontinued, and it's expensive now. So... I bought this, I think, for $5 a few years ago, and um, it's going anywhere from $40 to $300, bucks, depending on the size now. Crazy. And I'm just going to be honest. I don't love this one. I have it just because, you know, it's a reference thing to Houston. Um, but here's, I'm going to tell you about the notes, and I'll tell you what, I don't like it, but some people will. It's totally a preference thing. So the notes are pear apple blossom, lilac, musk, and sandalwood. I don't get all those things. I'll tell you what I get. <laughs> Something happened in the like 90s when CKB and a bunch of those things came out and I know a lot of you are crazy about it. It's okay. <laughs> it's also okay that I'm not. It smells like a dryer sheet to me. There's something screechy going on. That, and I don't think all fruity floral fragrances are like that, but man, something happened around the 90s where like we got obsessed with what we think clean smells like, and I don't like our interpretation of it sometimes, and a lot of French perfumers don't like it either. Um, so it's got this like fresh laundry spring thing going on or at least how a lot of perfumers in the 90s interpreted it. And it's just got a screechiness to me. I put it on my body. Of all these four that I put on my body today, man, it's killing me. Strong. So, listen. Different stress for different folks. If you like that like laundry sheet, um, manufactured clean kind of thing, you're probably going to dig it. So, there we have it. Listen. I don't like everything. Surely I'm not everybody's cup of tea. So there we are. Okay, the last two. I do dig a lot. One even more than the other. So next, Modern Interpretations of Houston. This is Houston Woman. Um, this was uh, released in 2009. So relatively recently. And this was created by a, a nose named, I hope I'm pronouncing it right, Carlos Benem. He works for IFF. Man, I read this quote and I was like, ooh. He, it says, he was chosen to interpret and improve the composition of Halston. And I get it, but like improve, really? Halston's a classic. So, okay, I get change or reinterpret. Um, and it's especially interesting and perhaps insulting for this reason. He worked for the original nose for the original Houston, uh, Bernard Chant. Uh, so anyways, the way that writers have, have captured this is a little funny to me. Um, so the way they describe how he kind of like reinterpreted the original Houston into Houston woman 
is by kind of turning the note uh, pyramid on its head. And what I think they mean by that is um, things that were perhaps bass notes or a little more prominent or, you know, something like that. That's a guess. I don't know. If there are any noses listening right now, I'd love to know what you think. Because when I look at the notes, they're not they're not all the same anyway. So the top notes are marigold, black currant, and bergamot. The mid notes are jasmine, orris root, and rose. And the bass notes are amber, patchouli, and sandalwood. I would describe this as a lighter amber fragrance. So if you think about the original Halston, you take out the oak moss. Um, and it's, I would say, just there's not as many things competing. You do get a little of the marigold and definitely a little, some of the sandalwood for sure. But I would say this to me, if I had to describe it quickly, is a lighter, like daytime amber fragrance. Really nice. Um, and especially nice. This you can find for like as cheap as $7 for the small one ounce bottle, maybe $14, $15 for the big, big bottle. So that's a great, great deal. And another thing that will tell you this is Houston Woman is it's silver. So have that. Okay. Last but not least, this is my favorite of the modern interpretations or flankers of Houston. My God, my God, get ready for this if you don't know about it. This would be Houston Amber Woman. Behold, this sucker is also dirt cheap. Like literally can find it in discount stores right now for $10 for this beast. Not kidding. And it is freaking gorgeous. If you like Amber, don't think about these other Houstons. This to me, I'm glad it's called Houston, but it's not really like, it's not playing off the original interpretation in my mind at all. But if you like an amber fragrance, my God, this is like to me niche quality for 10 bucks. Not now, but right now. Okay, so let me tell you a little bit more. <laughs> um, this was uh, released in 2010. So the most recent one that I own. Um, I think like the original Houston, while it doesn't have similar many similarities as far as notes, this is super unisex to me. It's warm, smells good. Who doesn't like that? The top notes are red currant, aldehydes, and mandarin orange. The mid notes are amber, tuberose, and rose. And the base notes are olibanum, which is like frankincense, uh, sandalwood, suede, and musk. This. Well, first of all, let me tell you, if y'all are afraid of aldehydes, because some of you are, because they're really vintage smelling, I get it. I like them, but I get it. This is not a screechy or knock you out aldehyde. This is more of a sparkling amber, but it's also deep and resinous. If I had to quickly describe this to somebody, Halston Amber, I would say incredible $10 bottle of perfume and one of the best ambers I own. And I own some really expensive ones. This is killer. It's so beautiful, you guys, so beautiful. Um, and it happens to be cheap. How about that? Do it. So gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Halston Amber. Again, if you're afraid of Halston, don't be worried. This is an Amber beauty, just a beauty. So that's what I bring to you today. Talking about Halston in memory of my mom. I'd love to hear from you guys to know, do any of you wear Halston? Do you love or hate it? Have you heard about any of these flankers? Have you tried Halston Amber? I've heard the men's is really great too, and I've heard that it is also kind of unisex. And I'd also love to know who the, like, what perfumes the most important person in your life wear, especially if it's a parent. Um, or what do you wear in memory of others? So thanks a lot. Hope to talk to you soon. Cheers. And may we be as good as the good ones we come from. Bye, Mom.